Today we are going to be talking about the Roland RP501, a fantastic all-around instrument that's going to suit a really wide range of users. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at its sound, its touch, we're going to be reviewing its features and of course uh, doing a little bit of playing as well, both in this video as well as a separate video where all I'm going to do is essentially play this instrument. So let's get started right away and thank you so much for joining us. So first up, let's cover the action. For anybody who is looking at a digital piano, action is always something that comes up first and foremost. If you've got a teacher who's out there helping you with shopping, the action is going to be something they're asking you a lot of questions about. And of course, if you've already been playing for a few years and this is going to be either an upgrade or a secondary instrument for you, you are going to have a pretty highly developed sense of what you like. Uh, underneath your fingers and so action is something I always focus a lot on. Um, with the action on this Roland RP501, the specific name of the action is a PHA4. Uh, that essentially just means that this is the second best action that Roland makes. This action has escapement. It has a really nice ivory texture on the top of the key. The only thing this is really missing in terms of spec uh, would be uh, it's, it's got one less uh, level of sensor quality on it and also it doesn't have the wood core that you get with their PHA5 uh, action. But besides Besides that, this action is going to rank very, very well in the price range we're looking at. And of course, with a piano like the RP501, in US dollars, this is going to be floating in around the $2,000-ish range. It's a very popular price point that uh, also has entries from Yamaha and Kawai. Uh, and of course, there's some other videos that you can check out where we explore those other models as well. Um, but from an action standpoint, uh, whether this action is going to connect for you, I think is going to completely depend on the style of music that you play. I think it's also going to depend on what you have already uh, become accustomed to as a player. Uh, this ranks very well, as I mentioned, in the whole world of, of digital pianos. It's got a nice weight to it. I wouldn't describe it as either light or heavy. It's sort of right down the middle of the road in terms of its weight. Anything I say is, is always going to be trumped by you sitting down and establishing your own uh, sense of preference. But certainly if you are looking for an instrument that is going to uh, deliver a pretty high level of response and sensitivity and you're playing at let's say a, a high student level or semi-professional level, I think this is an instrument that certainly should make the list of possible considerations if the $2,000 price range uh, is in there. Um, from a sensitivity standpoint, which is again it's related to the action, but how well the instrument does in terms of um, interpreting your physical movement with what it sends to the sends the speaker sends to the tone engine uh, it, it's pretty good Yeah, I think for, uh, again, for somebody who's looking for a good, well-rounded instrument with an action which is going to feel, uh, you know, is, is going to feel pretty natural for this budget, I think it does well in that category. Let's move on to the sound. Roland has done a really nice job of packing this instrument with some good, warm bass tone. Uh, as I play through the rest of it, it sort of has that characteristic um, a clear, sharper treble that a lot of Roland instruments tend to have. Even their amps tend to be uh, a little bit bassy and a little bit trebly. Uh, and it's instrument. It's funny how those sometimes those brand trains actually do carry through uh, multiple product lines. Uh, so we've got a nice strong treble, and from a bass standpoint. 
that's a pretty beefy bass, uh, considering that's not being reinforced with any kind of an amplifier. Uh, so the wattage is nice and sufficient, but the warmth out of the bass is something that I really have to commend Roland on. That's not something that you typically find until you get up into the $2,500, $3,000 price range. So that was a really, really nice uh, surprise for me uh, when first sitting down at this instrument. Um, from a polyphony standpoint, this piano sort of falls into the middle of the pack. It's got 128 uh, for single voice playing, meaning you're only playing one sound at a time and you're usually just playing uh, on your own. 128 is more than sufficient. You do hear about some keyboards uh, getting up into the 192 or 256. There are times where you actually will get value out of that higher note or higher number. Um, but for most playing situations, 128 is normally sufficient. Um, but I have to say that the, uh, the hidden gem underneath the hood of this piano, because the interface would not normally reveal this in terms of sound, isn't so much quality, although it's the Supernatural piano engine, which is obviously award-winning and goes back many, many years, has a lot of great tradition behind it, but it's the quantity of sound. Uh, when you first sit down at this instrument, you're thinking to yourself, oh, maybe this has you know five, six, eight sounds. There's not very many buttons where you can access that, although there are a lot of shortcut commands. This sort of gets into where the instrument really comes alive, which is when you add a tablet. Roland has spent a lot of money innovating how to connect their pianos with digital interfaces like tablets and phones uh, and this instrument is no exception. So if this piano felt perhaps a little on the plain side before you add the tablet, it completely comes to life once you add uh, the apps that are right out of the box and free uh, from Roland. Uh, but then there's all sorts of other learning apps and entertaining apps, playing apps that you can get off the App Store. Android or iOS, uh, and that's where this thing just explodes, uh, you know, with, with fun and entertainment factor. So, I've got just a basic uh, iPad. I, I have no idea what version of iPad this is. It doesn't really matter. It's something that was purchased sometime, I think, in 2017. So it's relatively recent, but it's not anything crazy. Uh, and I've got it hooked up through the Bluetooth wireless. And I'm going to show you a couple of things. The first thing I'm going to show you is what they call the Piano Partner 2. So the Piano Partner 2 uh, really basically lets you control the entire machine from this touchscreen instead of using what sometimes can feel a little bit like a clunky interface. Uh, so there's two real modes in this. One is where uh, they call it remote control, but really you're able to select um, all of the sounds that you want to be playing on individually from this. And this is where you start to realize that this piano, rather than just having a few, has a few hundred sounds to choose from. So they've got 11 piano sounds, then they uh, get into 40 other, let's call them sort of high quality specialized Roland sounds, but then they have the entire general MIDI 2 sound bank, which is gets into like the 300 range, 305. So you know, I don't know when you need a heartbeat, but you know, the time you do, it's here on the 501. Uh, I think that was a bagpipe. But even if you stay somewhat focused on their specialized sounds, that's the concert piano, piano and strings. Reg time. Or anything else like a clav. So a couple of really nice, lush pads. And of course, if you're using this anyway to trigger your sounds, or at least to remote control the piano, you'll know, of course, that there is software where literally there's millions of sounds and you can just use this as a MIDI trigger and actually have the sound being generated from an iPad or another computer. Second piece of software I'm going to quickly mention uh, is one that they call uh, their 
It's where you can access the rhythms. And this is fun for people who, again, a piano is, is sort of a nice, entertaining personal hobby. Uh, you get into the rhythms, and this is where the piano can be joined up with a whole other band. And instead of fighting through lots of key commands, this is simple as press and go. So yeah, we all lose days of our life you know, playing around with these things. It's fun and it should be fun. You know, at the end of the day, I really appreciate the fact that we're getting all of this other technology involved in pianos generally. I, you sometimes will hear uh, people who are involved more on the traditional side of the business argue against having all of these entertainment things or these more technologically driven aspects coming into piano culture. I say, you know, anything that is going to keep this instrument relevant, keep this instrument a part of our lives, keep this instrument part of pop culture is a good thing. We know it's great for our souls, it's great for our minds, so, and, and so kudos to Roland generally for making sure that this has been a major uh, effort. So just to wrap up, here's the RP501 from Roland. Uh, to me, uh, the last piece of advice I always uh, like to give is who this instrument is for and who I think uh, you know, should be putting this on their wish list. This is a great all-round home digital piano, obviously one that you're not going to have to move around a lot. It's not particularly portable, but it's still light enough to move when you need to. Um, but you've got an action which is going to satisfy the majority of pianists that have some previous experience. It's got sound which is certainly good enough to satisfy people who know that they want to get something better than a, a sort of a Best Buy two or three hundred dollar job. They've got a bit of budget, but maybe piano is not something they're pursuing at a very high level, but they want to have fun with it. Uh, the integration with the tablet works exceptionally well. It's an easy to use instrument um, and uh, if, if I can speak to Roland's general quality, uh, anybody who buys this is probably going to be still looking at a completely fully functional instrument 10 years from the day they buy it, even if they're using it for a couple hours a day. Um, I'm a long time user of Roland product and I always speak very highly and with a lot of confidence when we talk about their quality of the product. Let me know what you think in the comments and of course let us know what you thought of the video as well. Good luck with your shopping. Again, I'm Stu Harrison and you've been here with Merriam Pianos. <laughs>